All right, what's going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to our 10th Athletes Entrepreneur Panel. Can you believe it's number 10 already? We started these back in October of 2020, and we've been rolling since. Haven't stopped, haven't missed a beat. This is Athletes Entrepreneur number 10. Let's get into today's show. As always, we have another tremendous lineup of athletes turned entrepreneurs for you today. Next up, we got the man himself, the people's champ, Corey Camp. Uh, Corey Camp, a former nationally ranked swimmer turned forever athlete, hence the shirt. Corey Camp has spent much of his time following his formal athletic career researching how to bring the athletic mindset and feeling of flow into daily life. Corey started the Athletic Mindset podcast as a way for him to share insights from conversations with the world's most elite athletes and coaches. This endeavor helped him discover his true purpose and realize his potential for impact goes beyond just helping people with their physical abilities. And it's really the mind that determines who will succeed and to what extent. From this, Forever Athlete was founded, a company dedicated to providing athletes of all backgrounds, the tools, resources, and community needed to feel flow in their everyday life. Please welcome the Athletes Entrepreneur, Mr. Corey Kent. Man, Taj, you ever show up at some place and you're like, Man, you're wearing the same shirt as me. <laughs> there it is, brother. You know I How are we doing? Before. I'm doing great, man. It's a pleasure to have you here, man. You know I wasn't going to show it without my Forever Athlete shirt on, just out of respect. Had to do it. I, I appreciate, it, it. Man. appreciate I'm it. I'm looking forward. You know, I, this may be – I might be letting the cat out the bag, but I'm looking forward to us potentially being neighbors soon, man, at least part-time neighbors. Part-time. Part-time. That's going to be a beautiful thing, man. I signed fully just yet, but we're working on it. That is awesome. That is awesome. Man, I know we're going to go a few different directions during this segment because you're, you're a wealth of knowledge. Um, and once again, I have to do another shameless plug, but it's not really shameless because I'm really helping people get their knowledge up. Go back to episode 96 of the Thrive After Sports podcast. The episode is called, you guessed it, Forever Athlete with Corey Camp. Make sure you check that out. We went in depth for about an hour. Um I don't know, man, Corey. I don't even know where to begin with this. We can go several different directions. I know something you've been talking a lot about lately on your podcast is flow. Um, yeah. I've been you, You've been dropping gems on that. I've heard a lot of people talk about flow before, but I think the way that you're presenting the information is rock solid. So why don't we just start with this, man? What is Corey Camp's definition of flow? Man, it's the best feeling in the world. You know, <laughs> it's, it's what we got so accustomed to feeling in athletics because – Flow is quite literally a state of being, higher consciousness, where we lose sense of ourself in the best way possible. Like time gets warped, our abilities to perform go through the roof, and we're able to be more productive, more creative, and honestly, just superhuman in that moment. And even just speaking on it, I'm like, I get excited, uh, as we all do, because I think all of us hear that, and we think immediately back to moments in our life where we're like, oh, yeah. I felt that way before. That's great. Uh, one of the things that I love to do with Forever Athlete is really key people in. Like that feeling from sports isn't exclusive to sports. We can recreate it in whatever we're doing now. So that's my definition of flow in a short, short sense. That's awesome, man. And I know all of us are craving that once we walk away from the game, whatever sport we play, we're craving to find that feeling again that we once got through our sport. So how do we find more of that flow in everyday life? How do we go about tapping into it and making it a regular part of our day? Yeah, two things. So first we'll cover the first, the four non-negotiables of flow. So we need these for all high achievers. We need them to perform. First off is sleep. So we need to have good quality sleep. Everyone's going to be a little bit different in that category, somewhere in that seven, eight, nine hours range probably. Then we're going to have a daily gratitude practice, which is huge. That can come in the form of affirmations. That can come in the firm, form of journaling, whatever that may be for you. Again, it has to be specific to the individual. Then we're going to be looking at number three is a daily mindfulness practice. And that when I mean by that, it doesn't have to be just like this Zen Buddha sit underneath the tree in the yard and meditate for three hours. Like it can be Something as simple as just being really keyed into whatever the task it is, is at hand. I use a great example. I find my meditative practice, my mindfulness practice, usually comes when I'm making coffee in the morning. I'll make it fresh drip coffee, so grinding the beans myself, boiling the water on the stove, then we're pouring, going pour over style, and it's a nice like 10-minute coffee process that really just 
grounds me and gets me into the day. And then the last thing is daily movement of some sort, which is, it seems like a, oh, duh, especially coming from the athlete perspective, right? Like we know movement has to be somewhere in there, but a lot of athletes, I think when formal athletics ends, we get overwhelmed by what does movement have to look like? When I say daily movement, it doesn't have to be the two hour workout. It doesn't have to be a crazy weight room session. It could be as simple as going for a 40 minute walk, going for a hike with friends. And once we start to mix and match, we understand those four, we can really double dip in some of them, right? Like you can go out for a walk around Lake Travis or around Lady Bird Lake and get some daily mindfulness practice if you just take the headphones out. And now you're kind of killing two birds with one stone there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, so that those that's the first part we have to like understand. Those are like kind of our fundamental pillars. When we have those four, we're more likely to be primed and getting ready to experience these flow states. Then on the other side of things, there's flow triggers. There's actually 22 of them. So we're not going to go into depth with all of them here, but understanding which flow triggers work best for you. They're going to work differently for different people. We kind of have to experiment and find our flow formula, which is really a lot of the work that we do. And it's kind of what I wanted to do with you today is like, let's find your flow formula. Like what makes you kind of get into that state and understanding that. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. You ready? Let's do it, man. I'm going to get some live coaching right now. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, man. Let's roll into it. Let's get it in. All right. Let's roll into it. Um, Well, first, and this is a process that I, I love taking people through. Why would you, why'd you get football into football in the first place? Like what, what about it at its core really attracted you to it? Oh man. Cause I was a crazy kid with a lot of energy and the fact that I could run around at full speed and hit people without getting in trouble for it. And, uh, I was faster than a lot of kids, you know, in my neighborhood. So that's what got me into it, man. I knew that I could be good at it and it was a great outlet to, to just get all this energy out, especially in an aggressive way. Yeah. I love it. Uh, you need to have those outlets too. You know what I mean? If you're not expressing those kind of emotions, then they're being bottled up and then they, they're going to come to the surface in other areas uh, that won't serve you in a productive way. Like football would. Uh, what about your best? Do you have in mind like your best football performance of all time? Or playing experience? Uh, yeah, I don't want to sit here reminisce on the glory days too much, but there's a game in high school where I had like two picks, um, a few touchdowns as well. I played receiver and corner. So great defensive game, great offensive game. There was a lot of scouts and, and uh, you know, recruiters and stuff there. So it was – that was my best memory. It probably – and I, sometimes, you know, guilty pleasure, I might watch the highlight tape from time to time just to watch the game over again. <laughs> Damn, that was a great game. All right, now now to present day. But yeah, man. Hey, nothing like that. You need you need that confidence boost from time to time, you know? Right. Um, do you remember by chance what led up to that moment? Did you have a certain routine in place that got you into that mindset, got you into that headspace of flow? Uh, I think at that point, I had five-hour energy had just come out. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, that was... That was part of it. Um, that became like a routine for a few guys, a few teammates before the game. We would pop five hour energies. Um, but yeah, man, I'm trying to think back to it. I think just okay, here it is. I I calmed myself despite mm-hmm. the fact that I had just taken a five hour energy to the head. Um, mentally, I was calm, even though my body was on fire, if that makes sense. A hundred percent. That's one of the key components of flow itself is all right, we are, the arousal of our nervous system is just enough. We're like, all right, we're ready to go. But our head's clear in the sense of, okay, I understand where it's going to go here, where it's going to go there. Um, Getting clear on your goals goes a long way. That's a flow trigger for a lot of us. The more clear we are with, all right, this is, this is my task at hand for the game. That's why athletes struggle so much outside of athletics to find flow again is because all the best flow examples 
are in the athletics. Right. So it's like, all right, clear goals. Obviously, I have to score touchdowns when I'm on offense, and I have to stop the offense when I'm on defense. Pretty straightforward, plain and simple. Now, now you become an entrepreneur, and it's like, what are my goals every day? I don't, I don't know. Um, so do you take time now prior to getting into work for the day to set up a system? Hopefully you're not taking five hour energies to the face <laughs> every day. Um, but to get you like locked in, ready to work every single day. Yeah, most definitely, man. I, um, I like to get up really early. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. look at my phone. I like to read a little something or maybe I'll just, you know, pray or meditate. Um, sometimes I'll like get up out of bed and then go into another room into my office and just kind of like lay on the floor and silent. So I'm out of bed, but I'm up, but I'm just laying down and kind of listening, so to speak, to whatever God or the universe, whatever anyone wants to call it, whatever I'm being told for that day. And mm -hmm. then I might get up and write it down for a little bit, just kind of journal. Um, then I'll make a cup of mud water. You know, I, t I told you the other day yeah. I was quitting coffee. And while I'm drinking my coffee, I'm kind of looking over what needs to be done for the day and um, jumping right into it. I usually, it's funny because I don't, I used to do my workouts in the morning, but now I do my workouts in the afternoon after I've done a little bit of work so that I can kind of break up the day and the workout's almost like a reset for me going to the second half of the day. I was about to say, you're doing some, some great stuff with that. We can get really strategic with where workouts go, where how our day is structured. I think that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur, right? Is you have a lot of freedom and autonomy of how you can set up your day, which can be either the best thing possible or it could be the worst thing possible. Right. Cause think of the moment that for me, when swimming ended and it was like, all right, just go out into the real world. Like you have free time. I was like, this is awesome. I was like a kid in the candy store. And then, 10 minutes later, I had a bellyache because I just, I didn't know how to contain myself and control myself in that environment. So it's good to take some time to set up that structure of the day. What I love that you just set there is you have that intentional break of the workout in the middle of the day. And again, that can be lifting weights, that could be walking, it could be whatever, but that's going to be essential, especially to experiencing a deeper sense of flow coming back into work. Do you have that feeling like when you come back into work in the afternoon? Yeah, 100%, especially because, and this is, I know you, you teach this as well in your coaching. Um, I take a cold shower afterwards. Yeah. So I'll come back, eat a little something, jump in the shower and finish it off with a cold shower. So the endorphins the, from the workout plus the cold shower man, I'm unstoppable in that second half of the day, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way to go. So you want to know why that, that is? Please tell me. Yes. So flow comes in cycles. There's four stages to it. So the first one is struggle. Like we need struggle to produce skill. So the fact that you're getting into the, the work day and maybe it's not flowing right away, that's okay. You need that struggle. Just like in sport, when you got moved up to that new team, and you got your butt kicked for a few months at a time. It kind of sucked, but you knew on the other side, like it was worth something, right? So we need to experience struggle to produce skills. And the second part is, all right, we need to take a little step away. So we need to distance ourselves from whatever that task is for you. That's kind of where that workout comes into play. Then followed by the, the cold shower. When we are struggling with something, you ever look at a problem way too closely and then you step away for a second. It could be in the shower. You have that like aha moment. It's like, Oh, that's the solution. That's exactly why we need to have that break because sometimes we're just way too close. And as athletes, we want to just power through power through power through. Cause that's, that's in our nature, right? There's a fine line of when do we power through? And when do we actually need to take a step back to kind of like redraw that arrow and then it gets launched forward and leads us into stage three, which is flow itself. And when we're experiencing flow, then we're problem solving on a whole nother level. We're making connections from this conversation and what I did here and when I did this, and it's all kind of making sense. And we have this like really huge Eureka moment. Um, and then on the other side of it, the fourth stage 
his recovery. We need some time after flow because it's a very high energy draining process to properly recover. And that could be something as simple as stretching, taking another walk, doing something of that nature, sitting in a sauna, ice bath, whatever, but understanding what recovery means to you and making it really getting gritty with that recovery flow doesn't happen unless all four of those stages are present. Mm. So we need to prioritize each of them as we go. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. And I'm loving this Corey, because I jumped on here, planning to interview you and here I am getting a coaching session. So props (laughs) to you for making great use of the time, man. I know a lot of people are going to benefit from this, especially uh, entrepreneurs. I did have a quick question though, just to take a deeper dive on this. Yeah. You said, um, the first step is struggle and that's where we can that's where we develop our skills by going through the struggle right like you said the whole like pushing the rock analogy kind of getting yeah. stronger every day um what was the i understand the concept of the second step but what did you say it was called again just taking taking a second to like take a pause take a step away okay how do we know this is what i wanted to ask you how do we know because i think there's a fine line especially for me i've struggled with this man yeah so this is where i'm being selfish with getting the coaching from you how do we know when it's time to take a step back or if it's just like, if I keep pushing, I'll get through to the other side of this. Um, do you know, or is it kind of like an instinct thing? How do you, how do you deal with that? Yeah. So that's something that we start to fo- tune into more and more. The, the more we're able to listen to our, our intuition and the more like self-aware we are really, it boils down to how, how in tune to your nervous system are you? Like if you can understand this is where I normally feel this is like ba- when I'm feeling amazing, this is where I'm here. Baseline is here and I'm feeling like down here, but we have to understand like what we're talking about right now. It can apply to like a three hour period in a day. It can apply to a full day. It can apply to a week it can apply to a month. Our ability to take on struggle can be trained as we knew, as we know from working out, right? Like each time, if I want to get stronger at bench pressing, which I never was, but if I wanted to get stronger at bench pressing, I would be like, all right, cool. I'm going to put 135 on the the bar today and I'm going to rep it out and I'm going to hit 10 reps today. Awesome. And then the next day, if I try to do 10 reps again, it's going to probably feel a little bit harder, but maybe I'm still making some gains eventually I'm going to need to take a step back and maybe cut my reps down, go up in weight. We can fluctuate and everybody's going to respond to a different program differently. Um, We just have to find what makes sense to us. So for you, it's like taking a time to pause, listen to that intuition. And I love things like one of the things I use personally and I use with all my clients is whoop, like the biometrics that this provides where we're looking at heart rate variability, we're looking at respiratory rate, resting heart rate. We, I like to look at trends. One-off situations are interesting to me, but if we're constantly trending where, okay, our recovery has been really, really bad for a week straight, that's a, that's a warning sign. Like, okay, cool, like what's going on here? Or if there's a very, very large spike in our respiratory rate, it's like, okay, huh. I know you've been grinding. You got that deadline that you're really pushing for, but I think you're going to benefit more from just taking a second, maybe a half day today at work and we'll step away and we'll come back. And I know that's the scariest thing to you when you're on a deadline, right? You're like, Oh, I need, I need to just work harder. I need to get this done, but you're not always working efficiently. So being able to be in tune to your biofeedback and having the, just natural intuition to start to feel those things, then you can get into flow and can understand that line of keep pushing through the struggle or take a step back for a second. Right. No, that makes perfect sense, man. I think that, uh, and what I love about the work that you're doing is how you've been able to combine, you know, we know as athletes, like the mind and the body are one. And the Mm -hmm. fact that you're kind of using the body to teach mindset and the mindset to teach, you know, for, for some of your training clients who are actually working on their bodies. Um, yeah. The fact that you've intertwined the two, I think it's really cool. Uh, you're like a scientist, man. I love your approach. Like <laughs> you can tell well, you've I, done your research. 
my my degree is in exercise science with a concentration in exercise physiology. So I've always been fascinated with how the body responds to physical stimulus. But over the years, I've just become more and more fascinated by how does the body respond to mental stimulus and what is going on in that sense. I'll give you an example that's really been like crazy impactful. We love we love meditation, right? I know you said earlier you you have your your prayers and your meditation in the morning to kind of get into the day. And I I think meditation is great. I think it serves a purpose. But at the same time, is it totally practical for real life? You know what I mean? Because if you're driving your car down the road and someone cuts you off, you're not you're not going to have time to be like, I'm going to pull to the side of the road. I'm going to meditate and just like bring my, my heart rate down. I'm going to become calm. And no, you're going to be pissed off. You're probably going <laughs> to try to make some irrational decisions. And that's not productive either. So what I've come to really love is using physical stimuli and stress environments in a controlled setting to help people train that nervous system response to the real world. So an example is like, I have an ice bath here. I love cranking that thing as cold as possible, like under like 38 degrees or so. And I love, I love, I'll put my whoop live on so I can see what my heart rate's doing. And I'll notice I'll pop in and it's an immediate shock to the system it's it's no different than the car cutting you off and my heart rate spikes it goes well over like 120 130 because the body's just in shock it's just get dropped into this really cold environment it's more or less going wtf is going on here and then the training part comes okay well let me see where i can take my mind to a certain place what can i think of how can i breathe and once I take, I find that out, I can see my heart rate now goes back down and it actually goes lower than it was before I was even in the ice bath. So now I'm even more of a clear headspace. It's when you're running around the football field and you get, you know, run into hit and then you come up and you're like, all right, I needed that. Like I needed that hit to like lock me into the game. You know what I mean? Before this, I was kind of running around. I was thinking all these things. It's like when they throw the quarterback, you know, a freshman quarterback in the national championship, like Trevor Lawrence a few years ago, they throw him a few short pass, drop a few short pass plays to get his confidence going. And he's like, okay, cool. Like we're really here. We're doing this thing. Otherwise his head's all over the place. We can use controlled stress to do that on a daily basis. Not You don't have to jump into a cold ice bath to do it, but it's going to help. <laughs> Yeah, man. I love that. Thank you for using a football analogy so it really stuck with me because you're yeah. so right, man. That first contact in the game, it just eliminates all the butterflies. It goes from, yeah. you know, palm sweating to like, okay, boom. There's that first impact. It's like, okay, I'm here. It's game time. I'm in the game because that first shock to the system happened, you know. Um, that's awesome, man. Oh, is there is there anything? I had a couple of questions I wanted to ask you just on the yeah. entrepreneurship side because everything let's you do with Forever Athlete is amazing, man. We could we um, could roll with flow all day, but let's let's go business side of things. Yeah, man. Just because I wanted to ask, I mean, I've seen you also really just. I was telling uh, Marlene before we jumped on here. I was telling Marlene how I've seen her just take it to another level, and I've seen the same thing with you, man. It's not that you weren't already doing big things. Don't get me wrong; you were already killing it and putting out great content and having great interviews on the podcast, but I've seen a shift, man. Um, you know, you launched the Forever Athlete clothing line. Um, you, you got a bunch of other projects that we're working on right now, we're working on the Forever Athlete co-author book. I just feel like there's a sense of urgency that is is evident in everything that you do. So I have mm -hmm. a two part question. The first one is what, maybe I'm just imagining it, maybe it was always there, but is there something that sparked that? And then the second part is like, big picture, where are you going, man? What are you up to these days? Like what, what's the next yeah. big frontier for you and for forever athlete and everything else you're up to? Yeah, no, you're not imagining it. I think and to your, to my point earlier of the bench press example, right? Like when you're first introduced to the weight room, you're, you're kind of struggling. Like I laugh back to when I first got into college for college swimming and they threw me in the weight room, I was not benching the bar. Like it was embarrassing. Girls were squatting more than me. I was like, man, but over the course of time, you're able to take on 
more and more of a load, right? And then all of a sudden people look at you and they're like, damn, Tosh, that's really impressive. You're throwing some weight around. Like you're a strong dude. Entrepreneurship's the same thing. I think when I, it's actually tomorrow will be a year to the date that I left my full-time job and started doing this full-time. And man, it, it's funny with a year perspective, looking back and saying, what was I doing a year ago? <laughs> like that, I was just kind of like hope, hoping that this would work. And it was, I was getting some progress, but then sticking to a program and just, I got coaching. I wasn't afraid to invest in myself. I'm not afraid to take risks and try something out just because I know whatever is going to happen is just going to be feedback. And that's going to determine like what the next step is. So I think that's what you're seeing from an outside perspective is just me getting more efficient with trying something, getting feedback, implementing the feedback, whatever that may be, and just rolling with stuff, trying to keep the momentum going and better understanding my own energy in the process. Um, And then as far as where I see it going, I'm super excited about it. What I've really been building here in LA is a conscious community and resources for people to come together uh, and just connect through how we connected, just our shared experience and provide a space where people are like, hey, look, you're up to cool things. I'm up to cool things. Like, let's collaborate. So I did an event earlier this month. I'm doing another one next month um, calling the Forever Athlete Olympics. We're teams of four competing over 10 events for some prizes, which will be super exciting. But what really excites me is the model that I'm building here. There's no reason why it can't be also in Austin, Texas, and also in DC and New York. I want to build a network where when athletes retire, whether they're professional or collegiate, they can automatically just get plugged into the forever athlete network, wherever they are, even if the, and if they move even better, now they have a hundred people in the new city that they know right away are good people. And they're just going to be plugged in with. So that's what we're in the works of kind of building right now behind the scenes. Yeah, that is awesome, man. I'm so excited for uh, the Forever Olympics or Forever Athlete event to come to Austin, yeah. Texas, man, so I can pull up, finally meet you in person after all this time, you know? I know, man. We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. I'll be, like I said, I'll be part time in Austin come October. So it'll be good. Yeah, man, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, I just want to point out something that I can't let this pass before we before we wrap up with this, because you talked about the thing that really had the shift for you business wise was investing in yourself and then also yeah. getting coaching and not being too proud. And I'm, I'm saying this because I know there are athletes listening to this who may be going through this or will go through this because I've been through it just like you, where you feel like at a certain point, nobody can tell you anything, which is very you know, and once you have that shift and you open yourself up to, okay, I don't know everything. I need to get with people who are, first of all, willing to take the time to help me, even if I have to invest to pay for it. Like, that's so key, man. Like, you see me, like, I'm a coach too, but for everybody watching this, I sat here and just got coached by Corey for 30 minutes. I'm not too proud of Corey. What's Corey going to teach me? I'm a coach too. Like, I sat here and learned a bunch and I have a page full of notes that I'm going to be able to take with me. So I just want people to take away from that. Like, if you want to go to the next level, you have to invest in yourself. And that doesn't always mean financially, although it doesn't hurt. If you pay, yeah. if you invest in yourself, that'll take you to the next level quicker. But I just want people to take that away. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Because that one hit me. That one really hit home for me. Yeah. Um, I was also on the other side of it for a while where I was, I had this big ego of, well, who, who are they to tell me how to do my thing? Like, I got this. And then I sat in that struggle for way longer than I wanted to. And I was like, oh, shoot, maybe they're onto something. Like, maybe I should give them the time of day. And the biggest analogy that we can draw is with sports, right? Why, like, do you ever think you could make it to the league without any coaches? Probably not. Yet, here you are trying to build a, a business and making the Forbes under four, you know, 40 under 40 list or 30, under, whatever it may be. And you're trying to do it solo. That's no different. Like put the pride aside, get a coach. It's going to help you out in the long run. And it's just finding the coach that fits right for you. Just like 
you could be the best player in the world, but if you're on the worst team, you're not winning the championship. Like find these spaces and these cultures that mesh well with who you are and understand you as a person. That's going to be where the biggest wins come from. That's right. That's awesome, man. That's the perfect way to wrap it up, Corey. We could go on and on, man. I definitely want to be respectful of your time. I know you're a busy guy. You got things to do out there in L.A. Before we wrap up, man, please tell people how they can get in touch with you, how they can follow the movement, all of that, please. Yeah. Nataja, I appreciate this space, and I love what you guys are doing here, so thank you. But if anyone listening wants to find me, at Corey Camp on Instagram, uh, CoreyCamp.com, or ForeverAthleteLA.com. We're working on that website as well. And come if you're in LA, come through to an event. And hopefully come this fall, we'll have some events more over the uh, the country. It'll be fun. Awesome. And everybody, please make sure you check out the Athletic Mindset podcast too. Because Corey's on there dropping gems. You know, at least I know it's I know you can find it on the website, but I just yeah. have to put that up there too. Like, you know, you're on there twice a week. You drop twice a week now, don't you? Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I was about to say I drop two podcast episodes a week, but I forget to promote the podcast. So <laughs> go check it out. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Well, awesome, brother. Thank you for your time today, man. We'll be in touch soon as always. Have a good weekend, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you, Taj. Have a good one. You too.